the reason I'm in a car today, actually, my car, is because I'm going to be doing a video about autism and driving. Mm. A bit of backstory about my driving and stuff. So when I was a child, I really wanted to learn how to drive. Um, it was just one of those things. I remember going to Legoland and going on those little... I think they're actually electric cars, but they were like... They were sick. Despite the fact that I had an amazing Legoland experience. Sorry if you can hear cars going by. That is the nature of being in a car. As far as I remember being pretty damn good at it, like a natural sort of driver, when I had basically no obstacles and every other driver around me was about four years old. As I got older, my anxiety got very bad. It turns out I have both social anxiety and GAD, which is generalized anxiety disorder. I did have them diagnosed. I'm not being presumptuous. And yeah, basically my drive to drive as it were, should not say that, kind of disappeared and I just didn't want to drive anymore. I was very happy going to work via the bus or train or getting lifts for my parents, which is still something I do a lot. So all the anxiety and the fact that I have autism, I'm gonna take this hat off. Like no one, no one cares I'm wearing a beanie. I was just like, you know what? I don't really want to drive anymore. And it was working fine. Uh, and then I suddenly realized how convenient it is. You can basically go anywhere and do anything when you learn to drive. And you also have more career opportunities because you can drive further afield and all that jazz. Because of the pandemic, obviously I didn't have driving lessons this year between March and August, I want to say. But I did start driving last year. The guy I drive with is called Mr. B, Mr. B's driving school, I'll link him below. He's really good, he's very patient, very calm, the lessons are structured very well. I've gone through all of the basics now, so including the dual carriageway. Turns out I'm not a big speed racer and I just went along the dual carriageway at 50 miles an hour, which is apparently illegal. I have lessons once a week for an hour and they're very fun, I really like them. You have to book them quite far in advance because they get booked up real quick. Yeah, I just thought I'd do a video about autism and driving. I also saw Sandy Sam's amazing video on autism and driving. I'll link that below. She's another autistic YouTuber. And that sort of inspired this one, but I also wanted to do a video about driving because I've noticed many things that other people haven't pointed out about driving that I'm like, is it just an autism thing or is it a me thing? Probably both. So let's go through them. My main issues, let's say, with driving at the moment are coordinating my hands and feet. I am learning to drive manual cars, so having to change the clutch was a big issue for a while. Bright lights from other cars at night. They're so dazzling. How do people who have eyes deal with driving at night? Like, yikes. Number three, I have fairly slow reaction slash cognition time. We had to do emergency stop practice and you have to pretend that someone's running in front of the car like a child or something and you have to brake really quickly. I was terrible uh to put it mildly as soon as he said stop i would take about two seconds to realize i needed to stop which obviously is not ideal but i think that's to do with my slow processing time my brain is usually not 100 percent in gear that was not meant to be a pun but it was an amazing one reversing wtf what's up with that why is it literally the reverse of driving forward like do you want to kill my brain cells? Number five, find holding the biting point difficult. Apparently it's quite common to have not very good muscle tone when you're autistic. And I feel like I do have pretty good muscle tone. I don't think your calves are strong enough to handle the clutch if you're autistic because I definitely struggle with that. And putting my foot up to the braking point is very hard to hold it there. Number six, other drivers intentions are a mystery. I mean, I can't ever predict what anyone in the world is doing, to be honest. For example, the other day I was watching my mum actually drive, so thank god I wasn't in this position, but the car in front of us just stopped and I was like, what are they doing? And then my mum didn't go very close to them and I was like, what is she doing? Turns out that car wanted to reverse into a parking space. So my mum left them enough room for that and I was like, I would literally never notice that until their reverse lights came on, at which point I'd probably be up their ass. Number seven, ability to switch attention from the mirrors to the road again quickly is not easy. You have to look at the middle and the side mirror of like whatever direction you're turning and then you have to look back at the road. It takes me about 10 seconds to full- actually that's, that's an exaggeration. It takes me about three seconds. Oh my god, I'm driving a car. And number eight, uh, this is probably my ADHD slash extremely short attention span, but I always forget what gear I'm in, uh, literally all the time. And sometimes I get to a stop and I'm still in second gear and I'm like, why did I stall the car? It's because you're meant to be in first gear when you pull away. Some quick solutions to these issues that may or may not work. Number one, practice, practice, practice. I've literally practiced every day, nearly. I drive to and from work, I have a provisional license, so I need my mum to sit next to me. And I do think that has really helped me get substantially better than if I'd only been having a lesson a week, like an hour long. Having this car, which was extremely cheap, but is very 
easy to run has been a lifesaver so i highly recommend getting your own little vehicle it's also extremely cheap to insure well for me anyway because i am 25 nearly well i will be when i upload this video pretty cheap number two wear those color changing lenses this is to help with the bright light situation at night they might help with the glare all biting points are different so every car you drive is different and people stall cars all the time even if they've been years down the line driving also apparently if you stall your car in your tests they don't really care some cars some newer cars have the gear actually in the dashboard so you can look at it uh, as you're driving so that way you will never forget what gear you're in but uh, I don't have that because my car is old I also thought to maybe balance the video out I'm going to do the main pluses for autistic people and driving why autistic people driving is actually a pretty good thing why autistic people might be better at driving than the neurotypical person number one is because of your slower reaction times you tend to stick to the speed limit and you're a lot less of a danger to the road because you're taking more time to do things you're being slower and more considerate more cautious about your driving number two we dedicate more time to driving because we know that it's a skill that's quite hard to acquire for anyone let alone someone who's not neurotypical so because we dedicate more time to it we tend to be a lot more proficient at it by the time we actually pass a test written exams are my forte man like written exams are the best all you have to learn is a bunch of facts and also how some of the questions are phrased because some of them are dodgy of all the mock theory test websites this is the best one i'll link it below it's so good you can do up to eight free ones and they're all really good also obviously reading the highway guide whatever it's called i haven't actually passed my theory test yet i know it took ages to book because of the coronavirus and stuff but that's happening in november the main thing i'm worried about is the hazard perception test and the practical test but that's not booked yet the hazard perception test you have to click whenever there's a big hazard and when i did the practice one i clicked way too much and that's because there's loads more hazards than the one that you're meant to find so i was just clicking on every hazard and it turns out that's wrong so you have to just look out for like the biggest hazards apparently there's one hazard per clip and then some of them have two other main pluses about being autistic and driving one of the elements of the practical test is following a sat nav nowadays because obviously people use their iphones or whatever to find places and i I am really good at maps and finding places in my opinion so unless you can't read maps at all this might just be me it actually gives me an improved sense of time that's another benefit this could be my adhd in fact it probably is driving is a lot quicker and efficient but i need to leave a bit more time to leave if you like learning names of things which i do because i'm one of them wordy people and being autistic i naturally retain those names better so when people have stories about roads that they have had breakdowns on i know that road because i now have driven along it many times and it's now ingrained in my memory the name of it and the last and um, maybe most crucial point is it helps you learn etiquette when you're driving like social etiquette you have to thank people when they let you go and all this so it actually helps with learning social interactions which i think is extremely helpful if you're wondering this show uh, it says spooky bitch it is from red handed the pod which is a true crime podcast that my sister got me into and they are amazing Anna and saruti you're the best and uh, i will link their merch shop down below although they might already have sold out these because they're pretty popular happy halloween even though halloween is uh, not my favorite holiday in the world thank you for watching i hope you have success with your driving endeavors don't worry everyone finds it hard i think apparently my sister who is probably the most natural driver you'll ever meet in your life said that she struggled having problems with it don't worry persevere get a good teacher if you don't vibe with your teacher straight away like luckily i did but if you don't make sure that you swap my name is neve you can check out any other videos here to do with autism i made a neat little playlist for you guys please subscribe if you like my annoying voice be spooky